All right. Hey guys. Um, so if you've been following us for long enough, then you may know that before Living Zeal and before I met Zena, I did a, uh, a step van conversion. I wanted to make a video during the build about the complete build process as well as a grand tour. I think it's a pretty cool conversion and I hope you guys really like it too. Uh, this is a weird random video that's just me and that's because Zayna's sick today and she's in bed right now. So um, I didn't want to bother her and thought I'd just try and do a video on my own. <laughs> So originally I was going to do a school bus right off the bat, but I decided to go with a van because I like the idea of stealth camping a little more. Um, so I picked up this bread truck for about 6000 and then I went and got my tools from Home Depot. Um, I really wanted to cover all my bases. And I'll never forget the moment that I sat back once I got all the shelving out and just looked into the van and was like, what am I about to do here? I knew the most important and first part was insulation, so I got to work. I started putting liquid nails on the back of the foam boards and stick them to the ceiling. Okay, so the way I'm actually attaching the ceiling to the ceiling, um, I have the foam blocks under here, which are all over there. Uh, pretty thick, but I can't really attach something to that foam. It's, it's not, you know, weight supporting. So I'm gonna have to anchor through the fiberglass ceiling. So what I'm doing is I got quarter inch bolts and I just drilled uh, straight through the wood paneling and through the fiberglass ceiling. And then I'm gonna go on the outside, use a washer and a nut and just tighten it down and probably cut off the rest of the bolt with my Dremel tool. Uh, one thing you gotta make sure you watch out for is there's no leaks, uh, especially in your ceiling. That's the place that prone to leaking water like finds its way into everything so I'm gonna seal it up with this uh, with this clear DAP flexible sealant uh, waterproof it's, it's kind of made for this sort of thing so I'll show you a picture of that when I'm done putting the ceiling here um, there's no real way to attach it to these metal studs on liquid nailing it to the studs and letting one piece of wood support the other. They have these little grommets that link onto the next piece. Um, there's one over here. So it has a groove on one side and a grommet on the other. Male and a female, and just plug right into each other. Uh, really nice looking wood. So I have to use these um, sort of structural beams. They're holding up the ceiling right now until the glue settles, and then I can move on to the next section. So it's kind of painstaking, but it's gonna look gorgeous. I'm so excited. So I was looking everywhere for aromatic cedar and just could not find it and actually walked down the closet aisle of Home Depot and these are made for lining your closet and I just lined the whole ceiling right underneath where I wanted my bed to be. This is the difference that insulating makes. Uh, this is the cabin and there's no insulation up here at all. I haven't done anything to the cabin whatsoever. And I'm going to take a temperature reading, a couple different areas, so we'll go with this, this, this ceiling, 99.2 degrees. 110 I saw a spike at, but we're gonna go with like about 105. Check the doors. 199, 102 degrees on the doors. Let's step into the back. Insulated. Seriously insulated. Except I have the back door open. I do have the swamp cooler, pushing some air in here to keep it cool, but it's just going right out. Let's see how the insulation does. 80. 79. This is the hottest wall because it's facing the cabin, but it's only 76 degrees, so that's fantastic. Six. So we're in the 70s, 78. One thing I ran into a lot was trying to find out the, the balance between when I should go to Home Depot and, and um, when I was trying to save time by doing a lot in one day. But really, I ended up with having to unload and load the van multiple times because I got way too much stuff. 
And before I realized the importance of a good structural wall, I built this crappy wall with 2x4s, and then the door fell apart and gave me a scar on my leg that I'll probably have for the rest of my life. So I went back and built this super beefy wall, did some decorative trim on it, and was able to mount my stove on the backside. But you can see right here, there's like six studs holding this beefy wall up, which really became the structural integrity for everything I made and, and my lunches. Since I had that part of the frame up, now I wanted to get the front door made and put that up. I was a little eager, so I kind of slapped everything together, insulated it, and tried to get it up a little too quickly. I ended up having to remake the door later down the road. Next, I wanted to mount my medicine cabinet, and to do that, I just drilled four big holes in my wall and then cut the space out in between them. Although I didn't realize that there were structural beams that ran uh, both horizontally and vertically in the wall, so I couldn't actually do that. One thing you'll notice that I was able to do though, since I had big holes in the wall, was I was able to spray foam the whole back area of the wall because of that. Next, I mounted the swamp cooler to the wall because it was moving around everywhere when I was driving, uh, and then I went ahead and mounted the medicine cabinet. I was a bit eager to get the floors in, and I, I guess now I, looking back, should have waited because there was a lot of gross stuff like glue and scrap wood and I scraped things on the floor and I should have waited to put the floors in but I really wanted to get them down and they look great. So then I made this desk area. This is them when they're out and this is it when they're in and I can actually sit here and do work and kind of look out the window. This is around the same time I got the solar panel in the mail. Very exciting and did my whole solar setup which I haven't if you haven't seen our other videos watch our solar videos they go into what I did in the van in a lot more depth and electricity was really exciting to me so the first thing I did was uh, install my guitar amp and plugged all that in just very very roughly there was like wires laying around everywhere but I really just wanted to uh, play some guitar <laughs> to hearth right here for my fireplace so all these kind of fancy metal tiles and then this is uh, black granite so yeah I also have it all wrapped in this aluminum tape to keep everything from not catching on fire I was trying to make as many modular things in here to save space so this table actually folds down flat against the, uh, the wall there okay just a quick update I uh, just sort of framing out my bed here this wall is one of my support walls. This wall and this wall I can both, I can build off of. Um, this wall is all steel plate. That wall is steel plate, obviously the door is steel. So I can't really build off of those walls very well. I certainly can't anchor the 2x4s to them without pre-drilling a bunch of nonsense. So what I did is, um, there's a big bar back here that actually has a rod inside of it that keeps this door secured, I guess, that's what it was for, and I decided that was the perfect height for my bed. So I just used that as the back support. Um, these are all, well this one's actually not yet, I have to go get the drawers first, but this one's down, nailed into the end there, it's nailed into this end, which is supported to this wall right here. So all in all, it's, it's really sturdy, it's not going anywhere. Then I came up with the idea just to box out this whole area. Uh, under the bed here, and then I'm just going to use these bins, these storage bins, and I can actually get a lot more storage space overall. Uh, right here I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five large storage bins. That one's big enough to hold like all of my t-shirts basically. Uh, that's me on that side, and then over here on, I mean if you step back it's quite a bit of storage space. Um, over here on this side, I'm going to do the big bin. So this big bin right here, has wheels and everything, it's pretty massive. It's gonna have all my pants and that kind of stuff. Um, that's gonna be over here on this side, so I'll show you that here when I get done with that. All right, today's progress. I got my storage bin in here. It's on these two by fours, and see the wheels just roll along really nicely on that wood that I've mounted in there uh, on both sides. So it just slides right out, lifts up, goes past everything here, and then I'll just set it on top of the bed and I'll have whatever. All my stuff in there, lots of stuff. Um, I think I'm gonna do something underneath of it too. I'll probably use that as like suitcase storage and stuff like that. Also started to tile out my shower. It's been an eventful day. I ran the tube 
So I have to run it all back there and get it mounted in place. It's headed back there. I didn't make the grommet for that. So it fits right on there. I can put it on any of those buckets, which is awesome. So. Update. So I've uh, framed out my shower. This is the pole that's going to connect to the floor there, which is going to have my sink basin on it. it screws in and out. Um, built this wall today with all my scrap wood. So I think it turned out really cool. It's fun and I, there's little shelves right here that built into it and attached plants too. Hey. This is a big moment for me. It's been the fruit of my labors. So it's not conventional, but uh... <clears throat> what? It's amazing. It's decent water pressure. I'm so happy right now. It's all coming from way down there. It's making noise. Water! I built this latch today to keep my medicine cabinet closed. Because it was flying open when I was driving down the road. And then I framed out the picture Fred got me, which is awesome. And, oh. Oh my. And then right below that, I built this F, F kind of shelf which hangs out over my where my bed's gonna be. And here it is. So normally the back would be closed, but I have it open because I'm working on it. Uh, so yeah, there's my entryway. Double doors, they open like French doors. And then I have like some shelving over here. I'm gonna do plants on. Probably have to do a couple videos, by the way, because I only have like a minute for each one. Some shelving on this side I'm working on. Super sophisticated door locking mechanism. All right. And once we get inside here, immediately to my right, I have my oven and my double stove top burner, which just runs off this little itty bitty propane tank back here. So it's not a ton of propane. I'm gonna do a window right above it here to vent it, which is under my bed right now. This is my hearth for where my fireplace is gonna go. It's just black granite with uh, stainless steel tiling going all the way up. There's the windows gonna be right here. Stainless steel tiling going all the way up. Uh, fireplace will be right there. Pull out desktop. So I move my peripherals right now. This drawer slides out and it's on heavy duty caster so it can take a lot of weight. Under that is my guitar amp, which slides back and forth as well, depending on if I'm on the road. This is my pull out seat. Sorry if it cuts off, we'll send you another one. Uh, it actually is on heavy duty casters and can withstand uh, 320 pounds. So I sit on that all the time and I cut some memory foam mattress so it's super cozy. Uh, above that, some shelving, some more shelving, pixel, picture, my map of the country with little tacky things. Above that, I have a shelf with some stuff. Um, I still need to do the fireplace, obviously the window. And over here on the other side, this is gonna be my shower basin. Right now it's my kitty litter basin. Uh, and then it's also gonna be a bamboo bowl attached to the end of this which will screw into the bottom of the shower. It does now, it's just taken up. Uh, so my water's ran. This is gonna have a shower nozzle, which is attaches up here, and it can be either for taking a shower, I'll pull a shower curtain around, or I'll spray it in the bamboo bowl and do it just like a regular um, hose, a regular sink. I also did it right next to the window so that I could pop that open and take an outdoor shower if I want. This opens as well. Both these swing open like French doors. This is a swamp cooler. Uh, uses much less water than an AC, can run off my um, solar unit, and then my medicine cabinet right above. I had to do like a little mechanism here because it kept flying open when I was driving down the road. Framed some artwork. All my lights are on dimmers because I like to be able to control uh, the wattage that's going to them. So all of my lighter, lights are on dimmers. Doing tons of bin storage up top here um, and below here. So up top you have those, below you have two, three down here, and then I have five actually under the bed that I have to take these out to get to. And then on this side, I have a big bin that pulls out here. It's gonna have all my clothes and stuff like that in it. And then under the bed, I have my guitars. I'm gonna have a toilet shortly. Um, that's where all my plumbing, my water tanks are down there. My solar is gonna be is over on this side. It already is, it's where the lights are powered from. I have my stereo mounted right here, which kicks it's so loud. I have a subwoofer actually mounted right under the bed over here. And then I have two Polk audio speakers. Uh, it's running off of the solar setup. I never actually got a chance to finish the, 
the van conversion because I met the love of my life and decided to sell the van and focus on doing the bus conversion, which we currently live in now and have been living in for about four and a half months now. So um, this is as far as I got until the beginning of Living Zeal. Um, this was kind of my bachelor pad, but those days are behind me now.